Welcome to the sixth episode of Beastomall 2019 Recaps from Reality TV Warriors. My name is Michael Armstrong, and returning to join me is the Canadian who has the orientation of a blind beaver, Logan Saunders. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome back from your sudden week away last week. Yeah, it was kind of out of my control. Well, I chose to go to where I did, and the place I went to, uh, El Nido, or or we were supposed to record while I was in Puerto Princesa, had fairly bad Wi-Fi, plus it was comp- like it was a private room, but it was like completely open air with the other rooms around me, so they would be able to hear my conversation perfectly, plus we would be hearing theirs as well, so it wasn't really an option. <laughs> and where are you now? I am in, uh, I'm in Boracay, which is kind of like... Uh, an island paradise within the Philippines. It is, and it was where I was supposed to go on my cruise last year, before the island of Boracay got shut off because of sewage in the water, and we got uh, routed to Vietnam instead. Yeah, like, it's really tricky. I don't know if you know the story, Michael, but uh, I barely got onto Boracay because of all the new restrictions and rules now. Yeah, I, I didn't know that you'd struggled to get onto Boracay, but I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> They have a cap on how many tours can come here each day. Um, they're very strict on who you can book with and what hotels. Like, I'm at an Airbnb, but we had to go to, like, a special police desk and had to get a special stamp to even get onto the island. Um, plus, the host family had to accompany me from the ferry uh, in Cataclan to take the ferry to Boracay. So it's this big process. Yeah, and now you're being accosted by chickens. Yes chickens and there's four was there two cats two kittens and two chickens but the chickens aren't actually like within this yard i don't think i think there's the chickens that are in the cages at the basketball court right by oh wonderful yeah the basketball court's like 100 uh, about 100 meters away and they just have chickens under cages right outside the basketball court <laughs> so you're getting the full boracay experience then yeah, because it's, it's just such a strange dichotomy. Like, you go along the beach, and it's just several kilometer stretch of just restaurants, cafes, all these really touristy things. And it's, like, pretty much the Vegas Strip on on the beach. But now they banned any uh, anything that's remotely uh, seedy since they just did the cleanup last year. And then you just go one road inland, and it's like you're in a whole different town. Anyway, Vidim. Mm-hmm. So previously, everyone except Sinan upsailed down a waterfall to stroke some poles, while Rick Paul slipped and Neil skipped. They played a very valuable word game where Sarah was for some reason in charge despite being super dyslexic, and Robert became the first man to go home this year. And how much money did they earn last week? They earned like 2,000 euros out of a possible 76 grand, something ridiculous like that. 76,000 euros was up for grabs last week? Oh, you obviously didn't listen to the podcast. In the word game, there was an obscene amount of money available. Like, Vidim record levels of money. They were, like, try, just trying to hand them out cash to boost up their pot. Probably so the mole could completely shaft everyone this week. Clearly, this was... I'm amazed how small the pot is. This is, what, six weeks in, and they only have, like, two weeks left to go. And there is not much in that pot. They are trying to get to record levels, and it is not good record levels. What is the record? What's the record low? Record low is about 10,200, I want to say. And they are definitely on pace. Wow. The only challenge they succeeded at this week was a challenge where there was no money up for grabs. (laughs) The maximum last week was 77,950 euros. They got 4,000 of that. That's better than what they've done most challenges. It is, but they somehow managed to lose money this week. Yeah, they lost, what, about a grand? They lost 350, so they're currently on 7650 of 104,600. Now that's got to be a record low percentage. (laughs) Yeah, to be fair, it's pretty much impossible for them to have earned 77 grand last week, but 10 grand would have been a reasonable guess and boy did they screw that up that's what happens i guess when you put somebody 
to oversee a word task that's dyslexic. And interestingly, I noticed a clue that is definitely, definitely, definitely a clue that other people have finally pulled up on. So, in the title sequence, they played the same clip of puzzle pieces in the water over and over again. It must have been about five or six times. It was really obvious this week. So, where are they hinting at then? Well, there was a a theory that it might relate to Meryl, but I can't see it. Because they were L-shaped pieces. And considering Meryl was the only one who didn't mess up this week? I'd be very surprised if it is pointing to Meryl. Especially because she still has been pretty under-edited. So, Sinan says the group is very fun to begin the episode. And we begin in San Gil on day 10. And Meryl says she feels like Sinan is trying to do the least but get to know the most. Finally, people are saying what we've been saying. <laughs> Lazy Sinan. The, the Scully and Hitchcock. But now he doesn't have his Scully. Yeah, Scully went home. And Rick Paul says that he doesn't think that Niels is the mole. Sarah says that she will have to keep an eye on Niels, despite him always going for money. And they are driven to Karuti, and dropped off at a brick factory for the first assignment. So in the first assignment, there are five sub-assignments, each worth up to 250 euros. And they can also bet up to 250 euros from the pot on each sub-assignment, which will be doubled if they succeed on time. However, if, of course, they lose, they lose that money from the pot, and they have 30 minutes to complete all the assignments. Who knew that while filming a challenge in Colombia that they would, that they would go to a brick a brick house? Like, what's inside those bricks? I mean, is brick baking one of the most popular jobs in Colombia? Maybe they just needed someone to chisel it open to find a rice telling in there. Now that would have been the ultimate rice telling to chisel open, wouldn't it? Yeah, what's inside this brick? Oh, about two kilos. Two kilos of rice jellings. And then there's a bit of debate about what their tactics should be, and Neil says that if they want to earn everything, that they should split up. Mainly so the mole is unattended. Yeah, they keep changing their they kept changing their mind if they want to split up or not, which I think lost them probably a good five minutes of time, I think. Yeah, well it looks like they got a bit of tactical time before they actually started the challenge, but still, they seem very erratic with their tactics. Yeah, they can't come up with a good game plan, despite CNN's best efforts. Or least efforts. Despite CNN just sitting out of everything. He's either sitting out or sitting on something in a challenge. The only time he succeeds is if he's sitting down. <laughs> and they decide to look at the first sub-assignment as a team, and then maybe split up. The first assignment is to count how many squares have been made from bricks. And Niels and Jamie decide to stay behind, and unattended... They bet 150 euros from the pot. And you knew they were going to miss at least one square. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I felt for Niels when he said a little bit later in the episode that he's terrible at these when they come up on Facebook, because so am I. But as the conservative estimate, I counted 35 squares, I think it was. And given that their ending guess was like 20, 27, that's still pretty rubbish. Yeah, that was painful. And the second assignment is to recreate a mole logo from Bricks. And they ignore that one for now. The third assignment is for someone to drive a steamroller through a labyrinth of bricks without hitting anything. They bet nothing, but wreck it Sinan, of course, sits in the steamroller and gets to wreck things, with Sarah guiding him. At least there's no words on the road. And the fourth challenge requires Meryl and Rick Paul to spot the nine differences between two piles of bricks, and they bet 250 euros from the pot, and there is at least one yoker hidden in the stacks. It's like snagging up a hidden immunity idol, and Rick Paul just swoops in there and suddenly puts it into his pocket. And then into his underwear. And then into his underwear. Yeah, no one wants to... Uh, no, let's not use the chisel on that one. No. No one wants to touch it. I pity the poor runner who had to take it off the table when Rick Paul played it. It's all sweaty. And I have an issue with Neil saying, oh, I'm not good at these square puzzles, because why did you play it, and why did you bet money on it, unless you're just trying to be the mole? Yeah, it's like, I, I'm, I already make the most money out of everybody here with my music career, so I'm just going to do this challenge that I know I'm going to fail at, just to tilt the table and hope people think I'm the mole. And they settle on 27 as their figure, but Niels thinks that it's 19. And the final sub-assignment requires Niels and Jamie to find the end of a red thread that is weaving through, like, stacks of bricks and stuff. And Jamie says that they have so much in the pot that they can afford to bet another 100 euros on it. 
has he not seen the show before? Like, he has really low expectations for how much money they were going to earn. I feel like Jamie's a little bit too obvious now. Yeah, he's doing, I mean, between the square thing and then messing around with the ropes for as long as he did, it's like, between that and the previous weeks, Jamie's going way too over the top with his sabotages. Because something always messes up when he's around. And I think he just, unlike Cena, he's actually trying to actively sabotage things just to get as much attention on him as, onto himself as possible. Which is a legitimate tactic. It is, yeah. If, as, if you don't mind not winning any money at the end of the game, I suppose that's the brilliant way to go. And Sinan does manage to get through the labyrinth without hitting anything much to his own disgust because he does even admit that he really wants to just drive it through the bricks. Because wreck it Sinan wants to wreck things. Maybe that only happens if they uh, bet money on the task, and since there wasn't any money up for grabs, it's like... Doesn't matter whether you succeed or not, near. I mean, there's no harm, no foul. He could have just, uh, I don't know, like ran Sarah over with it or something. Just, I mean, the same amount of money gets added to the pot. I realized that we started the season nicknaming him Racket Sinan, but he actually is living up to every expectation. It's wonderful now. <laughs> he'll probably, if he gets executed, I think he'll take the steamroller to. Uh, to Rick's house, make his make his foundation see a red screen. And Sinan and Sarah then split up, and Sinan joins Marilyn and Rick Paul to try and find the remaining differences, and Sarah joins Niels and Jamie on their failure of finding the end of the th- red thread. And Niels realises that the end that they have of the red thread can be untied, therefore making the challenge much, much easier. And of course they didn't find this out till like 20 seconds left on the clock. Yep, so the time runs out, and the fingerprint wasn't finished, and the thread wasn't untangled, and only one assignment actually succeeded, which was wreck it Cena in the maze. The other four failed, and three of them also had bets, meaning that they won a huge minus 250 euros of a possible two and a half grand. What's a great analogy about the whole thing is that they struggled at following a thread, and I feel like that's a per- the perfect analogy for how well they've performed at all of the challenges this season. They just really are a terrible team. I don't even think the Mole is particularly good this season, but they're just a terrible team. They're like the 1969 New York Mets of uh, Vidum. I will take your word for it. <laughs> just, oh, just, there's, they're never good. They're never, I mean, they'll win the odd challenge, but the losses are definitely going to outweigh the victories. And it only gets worse as you get deeper into the season because people are going to try harder and harder to uh, uh, get attention onto themselves as with the fewer number of players. Like, there's not too many seasons of the mall where they win a lot of money towards the end of the game. They will usually wait till final three to try and put some money into the pot. But we're in this prime stage of people trying to actively sabotage as much as possible. And Rick also drops the bombshell of there being three yokers hidden in the in the challenges somewhere. And only one was found. <laughs> they even suck at finding yokers. But the even better thing is the fact that everyone just gets strip searched. Yeah, it's like Alan from uh, Survivor Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers was there to uh, to be tripping. By the end of the week, everyone's just going to... the. Suspicion and paranoia is going to be so ramped up that everyone's just going to be naked during every challenge for the rest of the season. Just to make sure no one ever claims the yoker. And would it shock anyone to know that Jamie is of course the first person to get naked? Shock, gasp and horror. He volunteered. Like, they they didn't even suggest that they strip search anybody. Just Jamie said, hey, I have a great idea, guys. You should all join me. No yokers. I think you have a yoker. No, really, I do. <laughs> Is there a yoker in there, or are you just pleased to see me? Oh, <laughs> that's what happens when you have Sinan on your team. And Sinan does become Rick Paul's roommate now that Robert has gone, and Rick Paul was looking for an excuse to keep an eye on him anyway. And in the second assignment, Rick will go to different locations in Barichara for 15 minutes at a time, 
and they have to each take two envelopes. If they get to them in time, the money in the envelope goes into the pot. If not, it comes out of the pot, and they have to get there by Tuk Tuk, and Rick will give them particular instructions on what directions they are allowed to take. And there is a maximum of 1,900 euros available for the pots. And they don't reach the maximum of 1,900 euros for the pot. They certainly do not. So they decide to stay together and follow Rick Paul as he's good at map reading, until they realise that they're actually not going to be able to do that. Because Rick gives them the first location, which is the corner of Carrera 7 and Calle 2, and he also gives them additional rules, which is that Meryl and Jamie can only turn left, Cena and Sarah can only turn right, and Rick Paul and Niels can only go left, right, left, right. Yeah, they really got inspired by that uh, scene from Seinfeld. And I have to say, this is not difficult. Because even if you're only allowed to turn left, you're still allowed to go straight on. Even if you have to do three lefts to turn right, that's not difficult. You just have to be a bit more strategic about it. Yeah, you should be able to cycle around pretty quickly, especially in that small of a town. It's not like they're in Manila where, you know, it's bumper-to-bumper traffic. It's like, good luck getting any, getting anywhere in 15 minutes in that city. But there, it's just like, yeah, do a couple of turns... And then keep going straight, and then boom, you find the host. And the additional challenge for everyone is that nobody seems to be able to drive a tuk-tuk. Especially Sarah. Maybe the fully, maybe the tuk-tuks were removed, and they're just only allowed to turn left or right or left or right while running on the road. Maybe they would have had a better shot. And I, I have to say, the initial tactic, if I was doing this challenge, would be pair up with the person who has the same directions as you which they do realise a little bit too late. Yeah, they don't really realise that till the end of the challenge. <laughs> well, till the second round when Meryl and Jamie actually team up. But other than that, no one really teams up with the person that they should be teaming, teaming up with. Well, Meryl and Jamie, they're the only two to even succeed in the second round because of that, right? No, they were the last the last home. Oh, they were last... Oh, right, right, right. okay. Yeah, because in the, in the second round, Niels is first to arrive, Sinan is second, and then... Uh, Rick Paul arrives third, and then nobody else actually gets there. Even though Jamie and Meryl at one point can see Rick, but because of the directions, they can't actually turn to to get to him. <laughs> wonder if they were, they were allowed to go any direction they wanted to, as long as they were outside of the tuk-tuk. Neil says he has the orientation of a blind beaver. Jamie gets held up by a bin lorry. And then Jamie is the first to find Rick, and then Rick at Sinan is second. Niels tries to reverse up a hill and breaks his tuk-tuk. Meryl's third to reach Rick, and then everyone else fails in the first round. And when they meet up, Sinan says, oh, my map flew away. <laughs> Classic Sinan. In fact, his, na- his name is very fitting, considering that he, uh, he has not seen his map for a very long time. And I've always been brought up to, to know that Sloth is uh, one of the seven deadly Sinans. <laughs> <laughs> and in the second round, Rick is now between Carrera 11 and Carrera 6, and Niels thinks that there's no restrictions this time around, despite that not being what Jamie and Meryl said. And Sinan drives so fast that he nearly loses everything again, and Niels is first to arrive and has to hand over both envelopes. And Sinan is second, Jamie and Meryl see Rick, but there's construction in the way so they have to go round. And I did notice that on the roof of their tuk-tuks was a left arrow to say that they had to turn left always. And Niels has had a left and a right arrow on it. Huh. Perhaps that is some sort of clue. Well, that's what I thought, but I don't think it is. I think there's a bigger clue coming up in the third assignment. And Rick Fall arrives third, and Sinan criticises his map reading, and then the time runs out, and Sarah is just too late. Yeah, Sarah is not a good... uh, She might be... She ends up being the mole. She might be the one who's responsible for the mo- most money lost in uh, mole history. Like, can you th- what challenge has she succeeded at? I don't think she has, but I still don't think she's the mole. I know by default she's going to be your number one, given that you were quite lucky to not be on last week, because I would have been very gloaty that Robert went home. Yeah, I'm like, well, uh, I'm really narrowed down to Sarah now. <laughs> Considering the... Two people I suspected the most, along with her, are both already gone. <laughs> so Jamie brought in a plus 100 euro note and a minus 50. Sinan brought in plus 50 and plus 50. Meryl brought in plus 250, minus 50. Rick Paul brought in 100 and minus 250. Sarah brought in 
minus 50, minus 50. And Neil's brought in minus 200, minus 100, which means that they end the challenge with plus 550, minus 650, and minus 100 euros of a possible 1900. Yeah, not their strongest of weeks. Maybe one of the worst weeks in mole history. Yeah, I don't know how they managed to do so badly, honestly. I know, like, last year there were tasks where they lost a lot of money at the beginning, but I don't remember a season like this where they have so many tasks where they end up losing money, like losing small amounts here and there. Yeah, they they just suck, let's be honest. Yeah, instead of record scene in its second scene... <laughs> Although that nickname may be more appropriate for Jamie. And it does mean that they end the episode with minus 350 of a possible 4,400 euros. And end the running total of 7,650 euros of a possible 104,600. I wonder what celebrities they'll get next year. (laughs) Who's going to sign up after this majestic pot? (laughs) And now it is time for a surprise test. As Sarah said, Rick said nothing about an execution. 20 questions on the identity and the actions of the mole. Whoever knows least is out of the game. And Rick Paul says he's scared to only go for two people. He trusts Sarah and Niels, which means he wants to go for the other three, who are Jamie, Merrill, and Sinan in that order. Jamie says his number one suspect is Rick Paul. And Rick Paul says that Jamie's being a bit weird, and despite being very sporty, fails at every sports assignment. And Sinan thinks the girls did great in the last three assignments, and suspects Niels and Rick Paul, and is the first person this season to suspect Niels. Sarah wonders whether to spread or focus on one or two people, and she sticks with three, which is Rick, Paul, Merrill, and Jamie. Niels won't spread on more than, more than half the group, and he says it's time to pick them all, and he's wondering whether to skip Sinan this time. And Merrill says that Rick, Paul, is the only person who's been on her list since day one. She also suspects Jamie as he's weird during assignments. That's the first time I've heard of somebody being suspected as the mole because they're weird. Yeah, he's just odd. There's no other way to describe it. He's just a bit weird. <laughs> he's just a strange guy yeah he has ice cream for breakfast that's just a weird guy I think he's the mole <laughs> he also can do handstands I'm suspecting him because he can do handstands and whilst they're moping around Rick crashes the pity party and tells him to split into two trios if both teams do well no one has to see their screen at the execution and if one team does worse than the other they will be the team to see their screens so potentially we get another non-elimination. And what's great about this is that it's like the host says, okay guys, we're going to split into two teams of three for this challenge. I don't know, we've lost so much money. Oh, don't worry, there is no money on the line for this task. Okay, but we'll, we'll succeed for the first time all episode then. And Sarah and Niels are apparently the most stress resistant, so they split up. And it's Rick Paul, Niels and Merrill, and Sinan, and Jamie and Sarah. And they're split into two buses and driven up into the mountains for their third assignment. And all they have to do is go individually down a zip line and remember ten green or red screens. Ruled, ruled, hoon, hoon, ruled, hoon, hoon, ruled. Yeah, the team who does the best doesn't have to see their screen. If a team does worse, they do. Now, Marika is a lovely lady who does the subtitles for our episode, and she actually has given us a little information on the order of this. Because, as she pointed out, production will have known who got the red screen here. And if you order the contestants in age from highest to lowest, it matches up with who's got a red screen so far. With one exception. This will probably feed your suspicion a little bit more, but Sarah is in the place of a red screen. Hmm. So yeah, I'll stick with my Sarah suspect. So, Robert is the first... At 57, and he got red screen. Evelyn's the second at 44, she got a red screen. Then Sinan, who's 41, who got green. Evie, who's 40, got red. Meryl, who's 39, got green. Rick Paul, who's 37, got green. Sarah, who's 32, got red on this. Niels, who's 29, got green. Jamie, who's 28, got green. And Nikki, who's 24, got red. So, the question is whether that points to her being the mole, or whether that points to her being the person who should have got eliminated this time. Or it points to nothing, and it's pure coincidence. I don't think it is a coincidence this time. I think it's probably that Sarah should have got eliminated. And I'll say this now, if Sarah should have got eliminated and gets eliminated next week, I'm going to be super smug. Because you're going to be screwed. Well, no, then you know what happens, right, Michael? I have to find a new suspect, and that'll be the person who's the mole right before the end of the season. That's what happens every... That's how I win every time. 
but you don't win if you only get to them on week eight. It's better than being wrong on the finale. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish, finish just like uh, Jamie's pillow. So Sarah and Rick Paul are the first pair up. Sarah's a bit worried about it raining and a bit petrified about it not being safe. Rick Paul isn't scared of heights, but says he wouldn't do the zip line for fun. And it is so easy to get all ten. This is the thing. I know that you're really stressed when you're hurtling down a 800 metre high zip line, but the fact of the matter is, you can just convert it into numbers. All you have to do is remember the numbers between 1 and 10 of where the green screens are. That's how you win. You don't even have to care about the red screens. You can do it for the red screens if you really want, but you just have to remember five numbers, potentially. Yeah, you only have to pick one colour. Yeah, pick a colour and remember its numbers. That's it. And you get all ten straight up. Plus three people can do it to verify it, so... And the thing is, the mole is probably going to be playing for the team to do well this time because there's no money at stake anyway and they want more people to hide behind. Exactly, like there's... No reason for anybody to want to sabotage his challenge either. They pretty much made it as easy as humanly possible. I'm just a bit confused as to why there is a another non-elimination, because they don't like doing a second non-elimination if they've already had one. It means now that we're going to get a, a four-person finale, and it's either going to be an extra execution in the finale, or it's just going to be two runners-up, which will be weird. They've not done that in ages. Gotta use that twist sometime. <laughs> And Jamie and Meryl are the next two to go, and Meryl does not understand the assignment at all. And Meryl and Rick Paul say that they're not sure if Niels will go, and Sinan says he's not a, a thrill seeker and he doesn't want to do the zip line at all. And Niels also pulls out. So Sinan and Niels reunite with their teams at the execution, and both groups have their ten correct, so nobody goes home. I like how they still barely managed to succeed with this, because there's no incentive for anyone to sabotage, but you had one person not understand the assignment, and two out of the six didn't even do it. And yet they still somehow succeed. Yeah. So yeah, this this episode is basically just a, a bit of a filler episode, let's be honest. They lost money. They lost money, and no one got eliminated. It's a double whammy. It's like, who could be them all? Well, no one's been able to really do anything this episode, so congratulations on not being able to weed out any more suspects. Yeah. So, next time, they go to the beach and are attached to chess, no one listens to Rick Paul, everyone plays Russian roulette, and blue bags of bananas are brought across the bridge. What? Nobody's listening to their own teammates? Well, this group has excellent teamwork. They have the best teamwork of any group in mall history. So, who is on your suspect list? Um, Sarah, and I guess Sarah. Just because she's sabotaged way more than anybody else. Are you not having a top three this week? I, well, it's just that I suspect Sarah is so much more than anyone else, but if I had to round out a top three, maybe my second suspect would be, um, maybe I would give the nod to Niels. I mean, all my suspects keep being executed, so it's tough to find backups of people that I've pretty much ruled out early on. And then maybe Rick Paul is number three? Because Jamie's trying too hard, Meryl's been invisible, and I can't take Sinan seriously as a mole. Yeah, I mean, Sinan is definitely not the mole, given how he was actually trying to win this week. Yeah, he's the laziest guy in the group, was the most successful one. Yeah, my top three haven't changed in two weeks, and mine are Neil, Sarah, and Meryl in that order. You know what's hilarious with CNN is he tries to do well, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to make it miserable for everybody, I'm going to sabotage every task possible, we're not going to win any money. But yet, when it comes to any challenges involving money, he actually tries his best. And now this is the second time where they've had a play for not seeing your screen challenge, and this is the second time in a row where he has sabotaged himself. Before he's like, I want, I want nine other people to... Uh, to see a green screen or not see their screen at all except for me. And now this time it's, well, the other group can all do the zip line and get all the colors right, but I'm not going to do it, and I'm going to be one of only three people to see their screens this week. I'm going to wreck them. Yeah, I'm going to wreck it for everybody. And by that, I mean only wreck it for myself. <laughs> wreck it myself, Cena. <laughs> 
And who do you think is getting eliminated next week? Um, I feel like it's Meryl's time. She's earning too much money for the group, so she's got to go. We've got to get this group down to 5,000 euros by the end of the season. I'm going to stick with my prediction from last week of Jamie going. I guess if they want to earn some money, they pretty much need him to go. He seems to be getting kind of wound down. I think now that c is actually on to Niels, he probably is safe for a few more weeks, but Jamie just seems to have terrible intuition, and he's been set up to get a, oh, I've gone, what the hell, exit. Either that or Sarah, just because I'm rooting for her to go purely to annoy you. Yeah, my top three will be shaken up uh, next week if she goes, or the week after, I should say. Are you still all in on Niels? Yeah, I'm still all in on, in on Niels. It's the only way I'm going to win. That is true. Sarah's crept up to my second place for the past three, four weeks now, I think it is, just in case, but I'm pretty much fully on the Niels train. Choo-choo. So, anything else to say? Um, not really. I'm glad to be back in on the Vidum train. Um, and, yeah, I am probably going to go back to bed. <laughs> so... Thank you for listening to this video recap. You can join us next week for more more hunting. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact us on our Facebook page, Reality TV Warriors, on our Twitter account, RTV Warriors, or on Twitter pages, MJ Armstrong for me, Land Logs for Quacky for Logan. See you next week. Rude, 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 hoon, 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 rude, hoon, 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 rude. Peace out and chill till the next episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>